and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. If there's more than one person in a room, it's not always easy to agree, but, <laughs> well, it's true. Especially if there's a man and a woman in the room. Good luck. <laughs> if there's a man and a woman or a young, a young person, an older person, we have, we, we all have different perspective. We all have different experience and we all have different thoughts and, and, and it's not easy to, to agree. But when we put on the mind of Christ, there's one mind, there's one truth, and it's always easy to agree Amen. because truth is truth. And that makes it simple to be of the same mind and the same judgment. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called, to one hope, that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. There are a million things that divide us, but there's one thing that joins us all together, and that one thing is all that really matters, and that's Jesus Christ. And when we put him first, what is there really to disagree about? Doctrines, laws, religious rules, the color to paint the church, how to, if they, whether to put a steeple or not. If God, if Christ is first and foremost, there's nothing of substance for us to disagree about. That they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they may also be one in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. There is this mystery of oneness, right? The mystery of a husband and a wife, which is our example of Christ and the church. That's our example. The mystery of a oneness that happens when the two become one. When the three become one, when the church body, when the members of the body become one, when the churches themselves become one. Yes. There is a mystery in that oneness, and that mystery is the hope of glory. Amen. And it's the one, Jesus Christ. And lastly, I'll read from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, no, I'm going to read from Philippians, uh, chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. And the one thing that I underlined from Ephesians um, also is that we are to maintain a bond of peace. And when, we, when our relationships are founded and when we treat each other within the bonds of peace, that's when Christ rules and reigns and our body flourishes and the fruit of this body is the church in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Any prayer requests or testimonies? Anybody? Yes.
this with Nathan and Sally, but um, one of the things that was clear to me um, on Sunday is when you look up tribulation in the Bible, there's two paths out of tribulation. There's a fence and there's a birthing. And I'm claiming right now that your path through this tribulation is birthing for power in the nations, influence in the nations um, through what you guys are enduring um, and that God is glorified. This is a, it's going to be a testimony for his kingdom. And nothing but blessings on the other side of this. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyone else want to share with us what came to mind? All right. Well, let's stand and go to the Lord tonight. Uh, Roberto, do you want to pray for us? And then I want to come and pray for Roberto after the singing. Heavenly Father, we just come before you tonight. We stand before you as a Buddhist family together. Right now, we lift up Roberto to you, Lord, that you would touch the wound in his hand, Lord, that you would heal it, Lord. Jesus, would you heal that wound, Lord? Lift him up to you, Lord. Lord, the bones in his head, Lord, be healed, Lord. Lord, bless him as he moves with his feet, Lord, as he puts his hand on his head, Lord.
Roberto, do you want to take that thing thing? Yeah. I'll second it and take the thing.
time we, we acknowledge the reality of God and begin to praise him and worship him, he manifests himself. We begin to see his glory, the revelation of his power, his love and his grace. I appreciate so much what Tammy was saying. I know that her and Dan, I mean, come on, we know when stuff like this happens, it's painful, it's, it's kind of disorienting. But to be able to stay focused on the Lord in the midst is the key. Because God wants to show himself mighty. Yes. And he will, if you can believe. Yes. Praise the Lord. Nothing's impossible for God. And I believe that in every situation, if we can maintain that focus on the Lord and our confidence in him, the latter end will be greater than the former. Yes. Amen. He's going to do great things and do things that uh, you would have never imagined. What looks like lost, what looks like the enemy has stolen, God's going to restore it in ways that will make the former seem nothing in comparison. That's what our God does. That's the glory and the goodness of our God. And I think we ought to just give him a big praise for that right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen, amen. God bless all of you. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, Mike, everybody, for being here tonight. God bless you. Had a good time Saturday in spite of all the, ra the, the wind. In fact, the wind it turned out to be a blessing in some cases and a curse in others. Of, but as far as the picnic goes, we had a good time and good opportunity for everybody to get together and spend a little time together outside of the church. And so I appreciate those of you that were able to be there and uh, spend a little time together. Thank you to uh, Mike and Suzanne for uh, bringing the awning and, help and setting that up. And, I was going to say helping to set it up, but they set it up. Mike set it up, and I just got in the way, praise <laughs> the Lord. So it's my job. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So anyway, we had a good time, and uh, we'll, we'll do it again. We're, we're hoping to be able to do something on a little smaller scale in, in this fall. When it's, it cools down, we can have like a, there's a hot dog roast or something and, uh, you know, burn yeah. some. Burn some dogs. Thank you, Dan. Dan has already volunteered the charcoal. They have a lot of it, so praise the Lord. We'll be in good shape. Praise God. Amen. A <laughs> uh, sense of humor helps. Praise God. Anyway, praise the Lord. Let's get right to the Word of God tonight. I know it's Wednesday night. People have jobs and all that to go to. We don't want to uh, take any way, anything away from the Lord, but uh, want to be uh, appreciative of your time and take that into consideration as well. So I'd like to begin tonight, uh, Roberto, in John chapter 17. John chapter 17, verses 14 through 18. John 17, 14 through 18. So I've given them thy word, and <clears throat> the world hath hated them because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. As I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Now, 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Praise the Lord. You know, as, as believers, as uh, children of God, born again, born of God, born from above, amen. We have had our identity flipped from upside down to right side up. Come on. From sinners separated from God to children that are intimate with God, that have relationship with God. Amen. The shed blood, the death, the burial and resurrection of Christ has renewed us. 
it has restored us to the original relationship that God wanted with us. We don't have to find identity and acceptance through performance, through religious works. You have a new identity in Christ, and you have it by God's love and by God's grace. In the world, the, you know, the natural world, the carnal world, in the sense realm where everything is what we can see, touch, taste, smell, feel, it's all in the sensory area, the systems and the institutions are broken. All you have to do is look around. You don't have to, you don't have to do a lot of searching for the, the reality of that. So let's look at Hebrews chapter 4 now. Verses 1 through 4. So we, we are born again. We are new creatures in Christ. We are reconciled to God. But we live in a world that's still messed up. That's still all fouled up and broken and dysfunctional in most ways. Praise the Lord. So it means we have to, we have to deal with this world with our reality. It's so easy to get sucked into the way the world operates even when you're a Christian, and then lose the edge that we have, the authority that we have, the power that we have. We were born again for a reason, and it wasn't just to go to heaven. Heaven's a great thing, and, and it's great that we're going there and not going to hell. But that isn't the only reason. This, that, that's not what this is all about. God has a greater plan than just that alone. Amen? So let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Short of what? His rest. Amen. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Praise the Lord. So we which have believed do enter into his rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all of his works. Praise the Lord. Verse 10 and 11, same chapter. This is a good scripture if you're ever in a crisis, and if you haven't been, you will be. Praise the Lord. For he that has entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fail after the same example of unbelief. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is exactly what Tammy was talking about, what Suzanne was talking about, learning to operate from that reality and not from the sense realm, not from just what you can see, not just you have to respond, but it's how you respond. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So... Let's look now at Luke chapter 12, uh, verses 31 and 32. Luke 12, verses 31 and 32. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The rest we're talking about, we rest in that kingdom in the finished work of God, in the realm of God. If we do that, if we seek the kingdom, in other words, if we focus on that rest, if we focus on that reality, all the other stuff gets added to us. It gets taken care of. We don't have to be crying out and begging for a car or for this thing or for that thing. We, if we're focused on the rest of God, God provides all the rest of it. He'll take care of it if we stay focused on him. Amen. Amen. And he says, fear not, little flock, for it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Yes, Lord. It's not something we have to strive for. It's not something we have to work at. We just have to enter in. If we're, all we do is labor to enter into that, re, into that kingdom, into that reality, and stay focused on it. Yes, Lord. Amen. In the kingdom of God, we are citizens of a government that is born out of our relationship with God and our identity in Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. So in the kingdom of God... There's no sickness, there's no disease, there's no poverty, there's no burnt up houses, hallelujah, there's no wrecked automobiles, there's no fractured relationships, 
There's none of that, none of that exists in the kingdom of God. How many of you know? Jesus said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom is just like heaven in terms of, of our reality. Praise the Lord. So that's where our focus has to be. I'm not saying stuff doesn't happen. I'm just saying that can't, predom or that can't dominate our reality. It's a sense realm. Amen. It's the, it's the natural realm, the carnal realm. But we are from another kingdom. We've been born again. And we have to operate according to that kingdom if we're going to see the manifestation of all that heaven has for us. Praise the Lord. So there is, there's peace in, in, in the kingdom. There's reconciliation. There's joy. There's truth. There, there's joy even in the midst of problems and, and, and negative situations. Why? Because we know he's going to supply all things. Yes. Fear not. Don't worry about it. Cast all your care upon him and just trust him. Yes, Amen. He talks about being double-minded. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways and don't think that he can get anything because he can't stay focused on the one thing. It's just the same as saying, okay, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Right. But if you think the way the world thinks and then think the way the kingdom thinks, you're double-minded. You're, you're dysfunctional. Right. You're constantly, you know, uh, disconnecting from your reality. And so you're not consistent in the way that you believe God. You can't be in the rest. You know, you can't rest and be agitated. No. You know, so, some people go on vacation, but they never rest. I was talking to a guy the other day, and this happened to me. You go away for a week. My daughter, one daughter, one of our daughters has a, uh, a house on, on down the Lake of the Ozarks, and we go there every year for at least a week. But I'll tell you, after two or three days, I'm freaking out. I'm thinking about, oh, I've got to do this when I get back home, and, you know, the lawn's really going to be a mess. I'm going to have to work, you know, extra hard, and it's going to be twice as much thing and this, and, and, you know, what about this thing at the church and this person's issue and that? And, you know, it's just over and over. And, over. and after about four days, I'm ready to come home because I'm so obsessed with, what's going on here that I'm not enjoying there. I'm not really resting. I'm just idle. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, I mean, I'm still tense and, and worked up. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a job. It's a labor to enter in to rest, to be able to just relax and say, okay, God, you got this. You know, look, the grass will be there when I get home. It may be a little taller, but it'll be fine. You know, everything's going to be all right. And it's that way in every area. So we need, to, we need to labor. We need to work at focusing on his rest. Praise the Lord. Look at, all right, let's, for example, look at Luke chapter 11 and verse 17. Same uh, concept here in terms of being double-minded. He says, he, but he knowing their thoughts said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Amen. So the, even the kingdom of God for you personally can be desolate. It can be non-productive because if it's divided, if you're thinking natural, if you're focused on the natural and trying to, uh, trying to uh, experience the kingdom, you're getting no results. Amen. You're actually more frustrated than if you didn't even know there was a kingdom. Amen. Right? The devil will use that against you all the time. So a house divided against itself falls. Jesus said, you know, a house that's built on the rock, it'll withstand anything. Right. You can rest in the storm, right. right? Because you've got a good foundation. Amen. You are in the finished work of God himself. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. So we are, we're supposed to pray. We're supposed to declare for the experience of the kingdom right now. Not when we get sanctified, not when we get this or we get that. We are, we are already the righteousness of God in Christ. We already have access to the kingdom. The kingdom is ours. And we're supposed to be praying for it, declaring it right this minute, right now, and every moment, amen, of our life. When the negative comes, when the, when the uh, natural realm begins to speak to you, you need to be declaring the kingdom. Praise the Lord. I, all things are mine through Christ. No weapon formed against me can prosper. Amen. I'm the head and not the tail. Amen. I'm a, I'm a lender and not the borrower. Praise the Lord. I'm blessed in the house. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed coming out. Praise God. That's the kingdom. Praise God. And it's been purchased for us. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 19. Matthew 16, uh, 13 through 19. When, 
When Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? They said, Some say that you're John the Baptist, some say you're Elijah, others say you're Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee also, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom. Praise the Lord. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth, will be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Jesus. Now, how many of y'all got a revelation? Yes. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Yes. He is our Messiah. Yes. He is our Lord and Savior. Yes. Praise the Lord. Then you have a right to the keys. You not only have a kingdom, you have the keys to the kingdom. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, I, you know, it, it's like uh, Dan and Tammy staying at a motel. They got a room, but without a key, that room is really not doing you any good at all, right? You got to have a key. Same way at home. You lose your key to the house, what do you got to do? You got to break a window or something to try to get in. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We don't, have to, we don't have to fight our way into this thing. He has given us the keys to the kingdom, meaning that we have authority. We have the right, and this is so powerful. We, I mean, it almost sounds blasphemous. But he has given us the authority to bind on earth what is bound in heaven. What I bind on earth is bound in heaven. Amen. It's not vice versa. We look at it as though, well, God bound it there, so now I can bind it here. No, he said, if you bind it here, I'll bind it there. If you loose it here, I'll loose it there. Praise the Lord. That's having the keys. And that's having some authority. And we're living so beneath our reality. Our, our, our destiny and our, our, our uh, true identity Come on. because we're so easily influenced by this messed up, dysfunctional, broken system that we call the earth realm yeah. instead of functioning in the perfection and the power and the authority of the kingdom of God. Glory. Glory. That's what we got born into, folks. Uh, we're no longer of this world. Amen. Our citizenship is in heaven, the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord, and we bring that kingdom here. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The way it comes is through us. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. See, this, here's the thing we talked about at the very beginning. The world hates us. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm generically speaking, but they do. If you're honest with them and you tell them what you really believe, they, they just go, whoa. Mm -hmm. Unless the Holy Spirit's dealing with them, and then you can have inroads, right? You so you don't know who it is or who it isn't, but nevertheless, Jesus said, if they, they hate me, they're going to hate you. Right. Praise the Lord. See, this, this right-side-up kingdom disrupts the upside-down systems and the, the institutions that we live in naturally Amen. so that when we function... Why? Because God, the, Satan is the God, little g, of this world, of this, these systems. So when we operate in the authority of the kingdom of God and who we are in Christ, it causes disruption. It causes chaos in the kingdoms of this world. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's why they hate us. Praise the Lord, because they, they don't get to just, how many, you know, you can turn on the news and you hear some things coming across the, the television, the radio, whatever, just from news people, and you think, are, are, is the whole world crazy? I mean, do they not hear what they're saying? Do they, don't they get it at all? Well, obviously they don't. But that shows you how, how much of a difference there is between us and them. Right. It's natural to them. I remember years ago the Lord gave me a scripture and he said, it's like, this is the way the world will be. It's like princes leading horses and servants on horseback. Mm -hmm. See, that's the, way the, that's the way this thing has been operating for quite a while. Yeah. Christianity has been, we've been the servants. Right. And, the, 
and the unsaved, the, 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 the ungodly, are being, we're, we're the ones leading them around on their horse. We're doing the labor, we're doing the work, and they're just resting and riding and as, as if they are something really special and we're just dogs. Things are going to change, and the way they change is when we realize we have a kingdom that is not of this world. And we start operating from that kingdom. Praise the Lord. It tells us that, you know, in the last days, what's right will, what's right will be considered wrong. What's wrong will be considered right. What's up will be down. What's down is up. And that's what I'm talking about tonight. We, are from, we have been translated into the upside right or the right side up kingdom, amen, from a kingdom that's upside down but doesn't know that it's upside down. Praise the Lord. We are supposed to participate in the kingdom of God now. Not when the world decides they want to get on board. Right now. We need to start operating from those kingdom realities and start binding some stuff and start losing some stuff so our kids aren't being killed in the streets. Amen. So people aren't starving and dying before their time. So that people that, that, are, that are children of God are not being displaced and, and, and uh, dysfunctional, amen, simply because of circumstances in a world that have no right to authority over them. Right. And how can we ever draw the lost to something that's no different than what they've got? Right. Right. The kingdom, we are ambassadors of a kingdom. Yep. Praise the Lord. Amen. You go to any country in the, in the, in the world, and the embassies are the nicest, most, you know, the fanciest, the, the most auspicious uh, buildings in the, in the city. Not just in third world countries, but, you know, everywhere. They, they rep, they're representing the homeland from which these people came. And they're not dependent on the host country. They're dependent, they're, 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 their source resources all come from their home country. Right. So if that country's, if they're starving to death there, they're still eating good at the embassy because they're getting their stuff is coming from home. Right. right? It's the way it's supposed to be for us. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. We're just stationed here for a while as ambassadors, amen, for the kingdom of God. Our resources all come from God. So it doesn't matter what's happening around us in the natural, amen, because God is supplying us, amen, according to his riches and glory, not according to the circumstances that we're in. Amen. Praise God. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Psalms chapter 40, verse 11. And this is where we have to realize that we, we have been born again. We are reconciled to God. God doesn't look at us the way we think he looks at us sometimes. We're supposed to be resting in his finished work. How can you rest if you're not sure, amen, that he's okay with you? I mean, you're anxious. I, I love that old expression, uh, free as a bird. I, we got bird feeders and stuff, and I, we sit on the deck every morning drinking coffee, and I'll watch the birds. If I had to be free like a bird, I'd shoot myself. Because they're freaking out all the time. They're, all, they're never relaxed. They never calm down. They're always looking, looking, looking. And, and the slightest little noise, oh, man, they, if one takes off, they all take off. That's not freedom, church. They may look free because they're flying through the air, but the truth is they're freaking 24-7. They're, they're always on guard that something's going to get them. They're not relaxed. They're not resting. Praise the Lord. Withhold not thou thy tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. That's our reality. That was David's prayer, but that's our reality. Praise God. Psalms 44 and verse 26. Arise for our help. And redeem us for thy mercy's sake. His mercies are new every morning. We've got a, Suzanne, in fact, made us a wood uh, uh, picture in, our, in, in the house at home. And it says, arise, Isaiah, right? Yeah. But that's, I, I look at that every time I look at it, I think God's risen. He's, a, he's arisen in my life. He has, a, he has rose up, hallelujah, and nothing 
can prevail against me. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Amen. Doesn't matter what it sounds like. God is standing upright, taking care of my situation. Praise the Lord. He's for me. Arise for my help. Redeem us for thy mercy's sake. How many know we've been redeemed? Yes. Hallelujah. He has risen for us. He, ha he rose up, hallelujah, and redeemed us. And he's, he's always forever interceding on our behalf. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So when Christ came into this world, God became one of us. Thank you, Lord God. He took on the form of man. He declared and demonstrated what the world could look like. Mm -hmm. What he intended it to look like. Yes, Lord. He invited people into the right side up life. Uh -huh. And he called that life the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord. Everything you see Jesus preaching, we come up with all sorts of things that Jesus preached, but what Jesus was continuously and consistently preaching was the kingdom was on its way. The kingdom was near you. The kingdom's coming. He was talking about once his death, burial, and resurrection had taken place, the kingdom would be available. Thank you, Lord. That was his main message. Mm -hmm. Now, God didn't need to enter into this world to find out it, that it was upside down. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't like he came here on a mission like, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah to see if the people were really as evil as they were being right. told. Right. <laughs> he didn't have to come down here to check it out. He, he knew. Yep. Amen. He knew humankind had rebelled against his original plan for us, and the result was it was now upside down, dysfunctional, mm -hmm. broken. Yep. So God entered the world not to find out if it was messed up. He entered the world to set things right side up. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. John chapter 3, verses 16 through 21. John 3, 16 through 21. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. You're upside down world. You're already there. You're already in it. Amen. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world. And men love the darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Mm -hmm. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, right. neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light. I like that. He that doeth truth cometh to the light, and his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. There's another scripture that talks about God in us, working to do his own will and good pleasure. Yes. It isn't my good works. Amen. I just believe the truth. Amen. Praise the Lord that God is good. Yes. That God wants me to rest yes. in his rest. Hallelujah. Yes. So that he can manifest himself. Through me, Thank you, Lord. so that he can be revealed. Praise the Lord. God wasn't, wasn't satisfied with the world staying upside down. He wanted the right side up world, the kingdom world that he created initially. God's interested in deliverance. God's interested in liberation. God's interested in empowerment. He's interested in transformation. The transformation of upside down people and the introduction of an alternative to an upside down world. That's why Jesus came. Praise the Lord. Jesus didn't just declare the message. He demonstrated it. Praise the Lord. He didn't just talk about another kingdom. He actually lived it out in front of people so they could see what the kingdom was supposed to be, what life in a right-side-up world would look like, showing God's kingdom, showing himself to be the way, the truth, and the right-side-up life. Yes. Praise the Lord. 
Look, I don't know where we got this, but that's what we're supposed to be doing. Uh I don't know where all the rest of this came from, but I do know the reason he came was for us to do that. Not to to emulate his perfection in terms of his sinlessness. We've already been declared sinless. Our sins have been declared on him and his righteousness on us. What we're supposed to be doing is presenting a kingdom that doesn't match the one that we live in. A kingdom that will overcome, amen, the kingdoms of this world. Praise God. Not when Jesus comes back. It'll just happen. But right now, the world that I live in, it isn't the whole world. My world may be quite small compared to others in terms of my influence and where I am and where I go and the people I interact with. But I'm still supposed to be producing or introducing at best, at the very least, I should say, the kingdom of God to my world. Come on. Come on. I should be binding some stuff in my world that's bound in heaven. Right. I should be loosing some stuff in my world right. that is loosed in heaven. Yes. Praise God. Luke 4.22. And see, we, we have a tendency to forget that God came here to be like us. Not to be sinners, but to be in this dysfunctional, broken system of a world. To show us what the reality is supposed to be. Amen? What a man who believes God can do. Yes. What a woman who actually trusts in the word of God can do in this fallen world. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's go back. I want, I want you to see the whole, the whole leading up to this, okay? So go back to Luke chapter 4, verses 17 through 21. The Spirit of the Lord... It was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down, and the eyes of all them were in the synagogue, that were in the synagogue, were fastened on him. All right? So Jesus knew his identity. He knew what kingdom he represented. And that's all he's doing. He's just stepping out and showing us how we're supposed to be, what we're supposed to be doing, right? He began to say to them, this day is the scripture fulfilled. All right? Go again, if you will, Roberto, to verse 22. And all that bear witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth, and they said, isn't this Joseph's kid? Now, here's what's happening. They were amazed that somebody so like them was bringing a message so different, so profound, so unlike anything they heard. These are religious people. And he's saying stuff that just doesn't fit their religious thing at all. In fact, it doesn't fit their world. And what did they do? They turned on him. Because it contradicted their customs. It contradicted their traditions. Yes. And we've got all kinds of traditions and all kinds of customs in the world and even in the church. Yes. Well, you're going through this because God's trying to teach you a lesson. Or God's going to use you to bless somebody else because of all your suffering and all of this and all that. And it's all bogus. We're supposed to be presenting a kingdom that is so different from this when it ticks people off when we present it. When we tell them what might be, what could be, instead of what they're dealing with, what they're living in, what they're satisfied with, what they're settling for. Come on. Whether they're Christians or non-Christians. That's right. Exactly. Praise the Lord. They bear him witness, wondered at the gracious words that proceeded out of his mouth. And said, this, isn't this, he's one of us. Where's this stuff coming from? Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Verse 23 through 29, still in chapter 4. 23 through 29. He said to them, you will surely say unto me this proverb, physician, heal thyself. 
whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. This is Jesus' hometown. He's saying, we heard about the miracles. We'd like to see some right here. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. That's not real encouraging news. I remember when I came back to Iowa, I had some prophecies spoken over me, and I just said, you know what? I think the Lord is bigger than that. Praise the Lord. I like that. He says, uh, uh, verily, verily, or verily I say unto you. You know, it's like when I was in the military, when I was in the Marine Corps years ago, back in the 60s, they, yeah, it's still true today. I mean, Mike can tell you this. Attention! Right? What, what do they say? We, you know, people outside of the military, they think they're just trying to get, you know, they want you rigid, they want you, you know, doing your thing, you know, fingers, you know, at the hem of your Jack and all this kind of stuff, and shoulders back, chin in, all that. No. It means just what it says. Yes, those are, that's your response physically. But what they're saying is, hey, you're about to get some orders. It may be right face, may be left face, may be about face, it may be at ease, it may be uh, a, an announcement of something for that particular company or that platoon or whoever it is that they're talking But you're about to get some information, and they want your attention. Because it's important that everybody's getting the same message, that everybody's on the same page, so you don't have one guy turning right and one guy turning left and another one turning around and another one falling down or, or getting it all confused. They want your attention, and they're not bashful about getting it because they've got something to say to you that they feel is very important for you. And you better get on board and realize it's important too because it may be the thing that keeps you alive or somebody else alive. It could be something very insignificant in terms of the scope of uh, war or whatever, but the, the, your response is always to be the same. You got my attention. Okay, what's next, right? That's what Jesus is saying. Attention. Listen up. No prophet is accepted in his own country, but I'm going to tell you something. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah. When the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. He's telling this to the religious people. But unto none of them was Elijah sent. He didn't go to them. Say unto Zarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. Mm. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of, uh, of Elijah, the prophet. And none of them was cleansed except Naaman, a Syrian. These are unsaved people. But they did what God said. They believed what God said. They believed in the kingdom. To whatever degree that might have been at the time, they believed that there was a greater reality than the one that they were in. And, they, and all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. They didn't say, praise the Lord, what a gracious, loving God. They said, get this guy out of here. He's messing with our theology. He's screwing with our upside-down world that we've gotten comfortable in and feel like we can control. And they rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him under the brow of the hill whereon this city was built that they might cast him down headlong. I mean, think about this. This is so insane. This is like watching the 6 o'clock news. You've got this great opportunity. God wants to bless you. I'm here for this purpose. To, to declare the acceptable year of the Lord, the, 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 the day that God is accepting you and wants to bless you and heal you and deliver you and prosper you. Yeah. Now, I think I'll kill him because it, he, he's not agreeing with me. Uh, <laughs> See, that's where we are. And if we're not willing to take a step of faith and believe that this kingdom can manifest through each and every one of us. In our world, in our areas of influence, in our lives. Then what did Jesus die for? They should have shot us in the head the moment we received Christ. We should have gone on to be with the Lord. But he's trying to get a kingdom to manifest here on this earth. 
and it's us that are called to do it. Yes, Lord. See, the real Jesus, the real you, forces the church to become a reconciling, liberating, transforming movement, not an institution, exactly. not an organization, mm -hmm. but a movement that ushers in the kingdom. radical we we don't think it's radical because we're used to religion we're we're used to churches on every corner but this church is radical jesus went into the traditional church of his day the church of his hometown and he gave him a message that was just filled with love and opportunity but it was so radically different from what they were living that they hated him for it and that's why he says if you Follow me. They'll hate you the same way they hated me. Right. If you just want to be in a church somewhere on Sunday, fine, they'll just ignore you like they ignore everybody else. <laughs> but they couldn't ignore Jesus because nope. he was turning things right side up all around them. Yep. And it was messing with their gravity. Yep. It was messing with their comfort zone. Yep. Amen. Praise the Lord. Matthew 15, 8 and 9. This people draweth nigh to me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. We live by faith. And by living in faith, and in the confidence of God's grace and resting in that reality, we experience or can experience God's love and grace every day, yes. throughout the day, in every situation, under every circumstance. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. You see, because I, I'm not... I'm not, saying this, I'm not saying this to be critical or, or hateful or anything else. I'm saying this is going to happen. It's going to happen. It's just a question of whether or not you're going to be involved in it. It's what Suzanne was talking about. It's, stuff happens to everybody. We live in a world that is filled with tribulation. And we, most of us have already experienced our fair share of tribulation. But as long as we're in the world, we'll have tribulation. But unless we're willing to actually live or rest in the kingdom of God, we have no influence over it. We can't affect it. It just affects us. It just influences us. But God's going to have his kingdom manifest. And it'll be manifest through anybody who's willing to rest in that finished work, who's willing to believe and proclaim it the way Jesus did. Declare it. Praise the Lord. They're probably talking about you anyway. <laughs> who cares? I mean, they're they're just doing it behind your back. So what difference does it make? Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you shall have rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Hallelujah. You just got to get there. And everything's taken care of. See, only resting in Christ and his finished work is going to turn your world right side up. If you're content to live in this world and not in the kingdom of God, then you have to deal with the, the rules of this world, the sense realm. By resting in him, that's how your world gets turned right side up. Praise the Lord. So we can not only experience the kingdom of God, but then we can make it available to somebody else. Because if we don't experience it, it's just hearsay. You can't produce it can't give it to somebody else or invite somebody else into it if you're not experiencing it yourself. A couple more scriptures and we'll quit. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verses 17 and 18. Second Corinthians 5, 17 and 18. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. 
Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation, mm -hmm. the ministry of right-side-upness, yes. the ministry of the kingdom of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 27 and 28. Hebrews 12, 27 and 28. This word yet once more signified the moving, removing of those things that are shaken as things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Now look at this carefully. And this word yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken. What's shaken? As of things that are made, natural things, things of the upside down world. They're getting shook, and, and, and they're going to get shaken even more as we move into the last days, into the end time of those last days, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Yes. The kingdoms of this world are going to get shook up. Yes. The kingdom of God is going to be quite stable in the midst of all of it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. What can be shaken is going to be shaken. What can't be shaken is the kingdom. That's why we need to be operating in the kingdom, because people are going to be running around pulling their hair out and like their pants are on fire looking for some place that's stable. They'll run to the hills. They'll run to the caves. They'll, they'll find any place they can, amen, when we have the kingdom right there available for them. Praise the Lord. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Praise the Lord. We've been turned right side up so that we can turn others right side up. It's called the kingdom of God, and it's going to shake some things up. In fact, it's going to shake them right side up. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a praise tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Amen. Relax. If you see people looking like they're kind of off kilter a little bit, it's okay. It's just because you're right side up. You can see the flaws. Praise the Lord. Amen. How many know in the spirit there's no gravity? There's no nothing. There's no only spiritual laws, not natural laws. And that's why we can speak to sickness and disease. That's why we can speak to things that are as though they are, or things that are not as though they are. Because they are in the kingdom. They just aren't in this upside down world. Uh -huh. And every time we speak something into this world, every time we lose something into this world, we begin to tilt it a little bit more, a little Lord. bit more, and a little bit more until it begins to resemble the kingdom of God. Praise and ultimately becomes the kingdom of God, Glory. overcoming the kingdoms of this world. And that's just not nations. How many of you know we're all carrying around a kingdom where something rules? Praise the Lord. We can bring the kingdom to everybody that we encounter if we're willing and bold enough to just take the, as Shakespeare would say, the slings and arrows of their misfortune. Praise the Lord. And release the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Go in that power and do it. In Jesus' name, you're fully capable. You have the keys. Do some unlocking in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Have a great rest of the week. Hope we'll see you back here Sunday.